Hey guys, Winevitable here with another little guide for you. This one, First Night. Yes, we're looking at Garden of Terror. That is the map of choice here. And we're going to be talking about basically the early game, the first night, going into the first night, how to approach it, the battle for the seeds, and of course the garden terrors that result from those seeds. It's two parts. First, we're going to look at the actual play during the night cycle, how to approach that as a team kind of. Uh, and gearing up for, you know, putting yourself in a good position, and then of course dealing with a terror. When you actually do get a terror, how should you use it correctly? What's the best, most optimal way? You know, what can you get out of it? Uh, and so, you know, if you haven't seen the initial look at curse, uh, uh, sorry, Garden of Terror, and you're you're not completely sure on how the map works, you know, any of the basics there. If you're brand new to Heroes of the Storm, go check that out. I do another, you know, an intro video for each of the maps in the map pool right now. Of course, beta comes out very shortly, uh, within a few hours, and so there's going to be a new map, Sky Temple, a uh, new hero, Thrall, is coming out, lots of new changes, reworks for Abathur, Lily, uh, you know, and more, I'm sure, Falstad, lots lots and lots of new things coming out within the next 24 hours, so it's going to be exciting, and we're going to go ahead, I didn't get through all the heroes, we're going to go back and look through all of that, uh, and, you know, kind of, and, and start, you know, going through them and doing some probably new guides for some of the heroes that have changed substantially. Other ones we'll kind of leave, you know, and come back to later. Uh, we'll look at the new map, Sky Temple. Uh, so lots of new stuff coming out, lots and lots of uh, content because there's always, you know, Blizzard's putting out a lot more with the beta coming out. If you haven't opted in, not in the alpha, go opt in right now because the beta, you know, just go to your battle.net, you know, go to your account and opt in to the beta there. Uh, it's, you know, a lot of fun. It's awesome. I love the game. And they're opening it up to a lot of new players with it transitioning to the beta in the next 24 hours here. So go ahead and get that get that ball moving if you haven't already. And we're going to go ahead and look here at Garden of Terror. This is a Korean replay from the pack that Wolf, if you know him, the StarCraft II caster, you know, he, uh, he put up a replay pack. He's been doing some Here's the Storm content. Put this pack up on Reddit. Figured I'd take a look, sift through it. There were four games on Garden of Terror, so I said, okay, we can look at a couple of these and, and see how the different teams approach it. These are solo queue matches, uh, and so you can apply this just to your laddering, your quick match stuff out there in the beta, and you know uh, even some team play if you want. Um, we're going to keep it. It's not going to be the most uh, technical expert level stuff, but some, some simple things some, that, that can get newer players particularly on a good starting point. You know to go from to move from and uh the first thing you got to think of we're in the match already you can see it's 57 seconds in uh illidan here on the red team is about to die uh not not the most important we're not too worried about the team fights and stuff like that at this point it's more that at a minute well actually here we'll go ahead and cycle you can see we passed the minute mark illidan you know, rip, rip. Uh, you can see 26 seconds is counter in the bottom, right? This is going to come up in a minute in every match. And basically at a minute and 30, the six camps will spawn. Four smaller camps and then the two larger camps, right? Inside these circular stones, kind of like the Cursed Hollow tribute area. Uh, we'll have the large horrors. These have three smaller horrors each, uh, giving 15 seeds in the smaller camps and 60 seeds from the larger camps. That's 90 on each side, a total of 180 across the entire map in one night cycle. And a night cycle will last until you've, of course, captured all of these seeds. You know, if there's some horrors left, then the night cycle will persist and continue until you take them. So what to think? This is gonna be the first night in every game you play on this map. It's always gonna be in a minute and 30, and you kinda of have to be prepared for it going in. You wanna have yourself in a good position. You wanna have good health, good mana. Uh, you know, obviously at this point, at one minute in, you could back real quick just go back hearthstone back to the altar and uh then you know the halls of storm and then you can be back out into this area by the time the camps spawn by that minute and 30 second so you want to be full health if you're a little bit damaged maybe not as bad as here if we zoom in that is the tychus i believe yeah so the tychus is pretty low here uh, a well would take him up most of the way for example so obviously you know if you have a well up if you haven't used your your fountain here go ahead and you could use that uh, of course, but you want to be in a good position for this um, to posture because the idea is you want to get 100 seeds and get a terror, right? And you also, at the same time, the other goal is prevent the enemy team from getting a terror. So there's two goals in the night cycle. No matter if it's the first or the second or the third or however many, get a terror, prevent the enemy team from taking a terror. And there's always going to be 180 seeds. So there's always enough seeds for at least one team to get a terror. And sometimes both teams can get a terror, or sometimes you can get enough seeds to get two terrors. Um, and so you had to be thinking about, so you had to be ready for that first 
opening it. A minute 30. Don't put yourself in a really bad position and be out here in the lane. Low health, no health, no Hannah, you know, and no fountain to go back to. Because um, then you're just going to lose out on the objectives. You want to time things a little bit better than that. Go ham early on and then back if you need to. Uh, you know, or even if you're really bad, I guess you could die really fast. Suicide in. The exp you'd give a little bit of experience up, but then you're back into the fight for the seeds. And here they go. You can see the camps have started spawning. Now, a big thing is you can think of the camps like this. This is the blue side over here, these small camps. And these are the red ones, this one and then this one. Uh, and so the idea is if you can take three small camps, that's 45 seeds. And then you take a big horror, that's 60 more, that's 105. That's enough for a terror. So ideally, these camps here are very easy to take. If you you know just send two people to each one, maybe a third, if you can assist from like the mid lane, you can take your camps pretty well. But ideally, what you want to do is steal one of your opponents. Uh, if you can do that, you'll have 45 and 105. Now, what's the thing is, though, everybody knows this, right? Most people know this. And so you can see this Zeratul's already moving over here to steal some seeds. He's moving in the Jane and the Sonya, going the Brightwing phase shifts down. And meanwhile, Murky, what's going on up here? It's Murky and... is that That's the Illidan, yeah. Illidan and the Nova up here are stealing these seeds. They actually get a kill on Vala, while there was a kill down here on Sonya, if we actually go down below. And you can see both teams doing the same thing. They're stealing those seeds. Um, now, if both teams steal the other team's seed camp, the horror, you know, kill the horrors there in the small camp, well, then it's going to offset, and they'll both be at 30. And that's pretty much, I think, what happens in this night setting here. You can see, obviously, then this camp still belongs to red because it's very easy for Illidan to come over here and pick that up. And meanwhile, blue got most of the bottom seeds. You can see they're at 29, so they're one seed short of where they would have been uh, with two camps. And that's going to leave 31 for the red team. Okay, now, those are the small camps. Very easy to take anybody with good lane clear, like a Tassadar, a Zeratul, a Valet. They can eat through those very quickly and just destroy them. The Illidan's gonna go right through this. You can just watch him going through this. It's already dead, you know, how, long, how many seconds did that take for him to do? So that was, they're very easy to do and you kind of have to be like Johnny on the spot right there uh the faster you are if you're here at a minute and 30 right when they spawn and you have that lane killer you're that illidan the tassel or whatever you can get those seeds pretty much you know while a slower opponent takes more time to react and so you really want to that's the big thing about the first night is being ready at a minute and 30 and being in position uh and you have to coordinate with your team you want to get your camps and you want to steal one of your opponents um in this case both teams tried to steal a camp and were successful both teams got a kill and both teams ended up with almost equivalent amounts of seeds uh, and now they're they're fighting a little bit, and so the question becomes, well, these guys are a bit beefier. These the large shambling horror here. This these things take a little bit more time to kill, and they're very hard for one hero to solo, for example, uh, early game at least. And so I mean, not saying it can't be done with the right you know with the right hero, but um, they do take a little bit more time. They're a little bit more cost to them. There's more time. There's more. Uh, you take you takes more health. Takes more mana. It's, it's definitely more resource intensive to take a larger one, and so it puts you and possibly your team in a very dis disadvantageous position while taking it. It can leave you vulnerable to ganks. The other team, if your team's on this one, or you have two heroes here, the other five heroes could come in from like here and here and you know basically gank you, kill you, and take your hard-earned seeds, your hard-earned you know, cash right there. Um, and so you have to pick a timing. A lot of teams, what you'll see do is they wait for a window of opportunity. Uh, sometimes this is right away. It's simply a fast mover situation. We're the first guys in. We're going to charge in, get that terror before the enemy team can get here, and just hope that they don't react quickly enough, especially in a solo queue game, to make us pay for re you know in investing into taking one of these. Uh, meanwhile, the other strategies are, say, get a kill or two on the enemy team, or possibly take some merc camps. And that's what the difference is in these replays that we're going to see. You know, that fighting over the small camps is generally figured out, and you're going to see that a lot now. But it's more of the strategy of what to do about the large terrors. And in this first video, we're actually it's going to be a very passive opening. Remember, the first night started at 1.30. We're already a minute into it. Okay? And you can see Zeratul's up here roaming for the Murky Egg. It looks like Murky's going to get a kill on Vala. Uh, and then Nova's roaming down. So there's a lot of moving around. Illidan was looking like he was going to try and take a camp. He backed off for a second to try and go after the Zeratul. We're, you know, almost two minutes into night. And nobody has started one. Uh, there have been a couple kills. You know, or at least there was the kill on Vala. There's almost a kill here on Tychus with the Nova. But generally very passive. And now you can see Sonya is going over here to start 
a siege giant camp. And I apologize for the lighting. The night cycle does really strange things to the lighting. So if it's hurting your eyes, it hurts mine too. Um, but you can see the, the Illidan and the Sonya, they go in here, they take that camp. In response, the Zeratul's pinging this, maybe he wants to take one. Looks like Tychus is thinking about taking this. Um, but you can see now this camp is going to push the lane and blue team is going to have to defend down here or they're going to lose a little bit. They're going to take some damage to their towers and lose some experience from killing the giants. Red then immediately moves to his second camp. So you can see what I'm saying. This is very, very passive. We're over two minutes in. Uh, blue team takes their siege giants here in the middle lane and a little bit of a skirmish here. But like I said, I really picked this one first because I want to emphasize how passive this one was. Uh, and the fight here isn't, we're not going to focus too much on the fight itself. That's generic. That's, you know, not unique to this map. Uh, it's more unique to the comp, you know, in these players, but it's not, not what we're here to talk about. We want to focus on when to take the terror. All five heroes are up right now. Probably not, you know, the best, not the best time. There are some really good times, there's some okay times, and there's some bad times to take terrors. A bad time would be if you sent two heroes here while there are like three heroes on that camp and there's a hero in this lane and a hero in this lane and then all five heroes can jump your two. That would be like a bad time. Um, but we'll actually show a really good time to take it in, in a minute. Not to spoil anything, you can see now Red's taking their fourth camp. They actually had a bribe here, didn't catch uh, with the murky, I believe believe he went with the bribe. You want to see the talents here. It is Korean, uh, so they do for some reason favor a lot of block. We're not going to get into that. Different talent choices. Who knows? This is just a few replays. Uh, it's hard to generalize from there. Uh, but you can see now the red team, they've taken this camp. Zeratul's on the hunt again. Uh, but still no terror. We're almost four minutes into night. Uh, a little bit of a battle here. Both teams getting close to ten. There's a kill on Nova. There was a kill on Brightwing. One hero down for each team. And still nothing. Trying to speed things up, looks like Tychus is going to take a fall. And the Merc camps are doing damage. If you actually look at the buildings, mid lane is pretty good. Bottom lane took a little bit, not too much. This is beat up over here. Uh, that took a beating. Top lane is good for red team. Blue team, they're actually getting really, really pushed into here. And actually, I think Murky just took a death because his egg was down. Uh, and so there's a death. Both teams have hit 10. We're now over four minutes into night cycle. And nobody's taking a large tear. Very, very slow game. Looks like red finally setting up for it. They've taken all of their camps except for this one. Oh, well, maybe it's a good... Maybe now. There's no other objectives. Let's take a horror. That's one way to think of it, certainly. Uh, but what ends up happening is there's a team fight mid lane. The Nova gets caught out here. The Illidan gets caught out. He's in the Void Prison. He's about to fall. And the Jaina comes in at a bad angle, unfortunately. Um, if she'd been over here, she might have been able to escape to safety. But just coming in that late, in that position, she's down. Sonya survives. Nothing she can do, though. With that, there are three heroes dead for red. I'd say that is a pretty good time. We're still early in the game at 6 minutes, so the death timer is about 20 seconds. That's actually a decent amount of time. And so you immediately have three heroes shift down here. The Odin makes his way down eventually, the Tychus. Uh, but they immediately they come down here. There's three heroes dead. Boom. That is a terror. If you get a... Let's pause. I thought I paused the game there. Um, if you get a <clears throat> three hero advantage like that... That whole means you should be taking a terror. I honestly think this, like I said, this is very passive. Um, that is a wait until we've got the best possible moment, and then we'll take him. And they waited, and they waited, and they waited. You know, both teams did, and then finally, blue team got the advantage in the team fight. Three heroes up. Okay, now we're going to go take it. Uh, not saying it couldn't have been done sooner. You had all of the camps taken except for this hard camp. You know, this camp is even back up. Uh, you know, what is that, three minutes and, and 30 seconds? And so we're at 6.34. So it was a little bit, it was after six minutes that this was taken. Almost five minutes in the night cycle before the first horror was taken. And now they're also, you can see blue teams on their way up. They're picking the top tier. Uh, so this is a case of being really, really passive. Um, if you are up against some players, you know, that you really respect, maybe you're scared of, or you, you have a bad comp, you're having a hard time in the game, you could be a little bit more passive. And you can actually wait for a significant advantage like this. Um, that certainly works. As long as neither team is taking a terror, you don't lose anything. The only thing you don't want to happen is the other team to take both. And then you really do lose. Uh, but in this case, neither team tried for one. They waited. And of course, by waiting, though, then eventually there's a team fight. You lose out. And red lost out here. They lost the bottom terror. Looks like they're about to lose a blue one just because of the rotations here from from blue. They're about, start, they're about to lose the top one because of the rotations from blue. You can see immediately moving up. They're up. They have the level advantage, but not really. 
it's you know it's just temporary. They're they're slightly ahead in XP, <clears throat> and they immediately rotate up to the top. While red team cycled here, I honestly think it was a difficult position with red there. They uh, having three heroes down. Blue went here, and when one team takes a terror, ideally what you're going to do is rotate to the other side of the map and take that one. And you should be able to get here and kill this before the other team can take the first terror or first horror rather and react. Uh, in this case, red was down three heroes. All they could really have done is set up maybe in these bushes or right around here and waited for blue to try and take this and then jump them. Instead, they made the decision to go for giants. Uh, and so that kind of brings us to the next and final point of part one. But just remember that uh, before we talk about the last thing here in part one, um, actually, let's show off another opening real quick. And then we'll break to part two, <clears throat> just to give you some con contrast. Uh, and so we'll go to game two. Remember the idea is you want to, these are the three things, right? Small camps, you have to be ready for that minute and 30 timer. You're going to be in a good position on the map and be full health, full man as much as possible in a position to take the camps. Uh, then once you've tried to, you know, to get three camps, not four, three, uh, you know, you can posture to steal your opponent's camp. You want to ideally get three small camps in a large one. It's gonna. It's hard to get all four, and it's really hard to even get three in a good game where you've outplayed the other team. I think you can get three camps, and that's that's like okay, you've outplayed the other team some way, some form. Uh, if you only get two, it's fine. You just split. And you're no. You're no farther behind or ahead than before. So you want to get two as a minimum. Three is good. And then you have to think, like I said, about the timing for the large horrors, these big ones here, um, and how you fit the camps into it. That's the last point that's going to come up here at the end of this, at the end of part one, is how you fit the mercenary camps into this. Uh, you saw, obviously, in the last game, the we'll speed it up here, we're pretty early in the game, red team put a large emphasis on taking camps early. Now, what happened there, you can see, didn't necessarily hurt them. They were even in levels. They were even. They just lost a team fight mid and they had good damage. I think they had more damage done to the gates overall with the Merc camps taking them all. And they even had some damage to this gate back here. So they'd done, they had a little bit more map presence in the sense that they'd done more damage with the Merc camps, but losing that team fight hurt them. And so putting off taking the Horrors for that long kind of left them in a bad position where at the end of that, at the end of the first replay, blue team had a terror. And we'll come back to that in part two and see how they used it. Um, but that's something to think of is like, you put such a large emphasis on the Merc Camps first, if you get caught out or you lose a fight, you're going to lose access to all of those seats. That's one downside to it. The other downside, the, other, the upside though, is if you can take camps early, you can put pressure on the enemy team and allow yourself to take one. And I think that's what Red was going for. It just never materialized because Blue was very good about clearing up the camps. They cleared them up pretty quickly. <clears throat> and it just seemed like by the time they took this one, then they rotated and took that and then that. It just seemed very, <clears throat> almost a little too slow. If it could have been faster, then Red could have even then, after they took the hard camp, then they could have rotated right here and taken this, and they'd have been able to do it. Um, just a little bit slow, possibly. So Knight's coming up. It's about to spawn here in a minute. I mean, in a second, in a minute. Yeah, in a minute. Okay, Red immediately, notice Red's on the right side of the map. That's their base, but they're on the left side now. They're stealing this camp immediately, and noticeably they have five support. It's a pretty cool team count. Um, and, Mew and Brightwing goes for their camp here. So the idea with this is the Marine takes this camp on Brightwing. These four guys collapse here, and then you send somebody back to this camp afterwards. It's very easy to take this first and then fall back to your camp. Uh, that's just something, you know, maybe newer players don't want to pick up on. Uh, I think most, you know, more veteran players do get that, that notion. But it's something to, to, to understand is that this is more dangerous because the enemy, the path is pretty short for them to come through here. They can gank you. These are their towers right here. It's a short distance from here to here. And, you know, up this way, for out this door or through here. Uh, it's definitely more exposed for the red team versus this, which is basically, if you have like a blink, you can blink over the wall. You could vault back here, you know, when you're inside your towers already. So obviously start with your opponent's camp first. <clears throat> and that's what red does here. And they're actually going to get a fair amount of seeds. They, I believe, get that full camp there. Brightwing is working on this, and unfortunately, Brightwing doesn't have the best clear. You can see, you know, she's half about halfway through that, and she's picking up some seeds, but then Diablo comes in and Vala. Nice reaction from Blue. They're able to react and get some seeds. Tassadar comes up here to try and help. 
while what happened down here? Well, Nova came in to steal some seeds while you know Rhaegar and Malfurion went for it. And you, when you see it all said and done, it looks like about five seeds were lost. Um, so because of the reaction by blue team topside to come over here and get some seeds, and then Nova sacrificed herself for some seeds, they were able to stay almost even. They're down a little bit. <clears throat> Again, neither team, you know, there are other replays obviously where you'll see a larger differential there. But what happens next? What's most important is they immediately, blue team immediately rotates to the top tier. The Abathur Hat, the Diablo, and the Zeratul all going, you know, and attacking this horror here on the top side of the map. And red, meanwhile, can see what, the way you notice this too is you watch the seed counters after the small camps are taken. It's very easy to sit back and say, okay, they were at 25 seeds. Now it's going up, and it's, now this point's all the way at 38. You would notice it before this, but you're saying, okay, it's 26, 27. Okay, where are they getting those seeds? If the small camps are taken, it has to be from one of the tears. And just because you've where you've seen the enemies on the map most recently, you're going to be able to know if they're at the top one or the bottom one. Sometimes you might not, but usually with the first night cycle, it's pretty clear. <clears throat> and so as soon as you know that, what is the what do you do? There's really two things that I think, you know, the only two choices really are to take the other one or to attempt to attack them. And the safer choice, obviously, is to go take the other one, I believe. You can go take this, and as long as you clear it pretty fast, pretty quickly, you'll be able to get this down before blue. You can see blue is already rotating. They're already on their way down. They're on the hunt. Um, and, and basically, by the time red could have reacted to defend this horror, it would have been just too long to get the seeds. And so... They make the counterplay versus ganking the blue team. Red goes directly for their own tear. Um, they're actually clearing it right as blue comes in. And you can see, I think it was 85. Because <clears throat> uh, it was 25 plus 60 is 85, right, from the top one. So you can see they're getting some down here. Uh, they do get here just a little bit too late, but they get five. So where are we? We're at 90 and 90 with, well, there's one little lone guy out here. Uh, Diablo's going to take a fall down. And now all five red heroes are bottom. I think Nova's going to fall. So two kills. That's extending the red team's advantage. And you can see how that was really risky. Blue team got five seeds out of that for two kills. And I would say, it's, I would argue it's not worth it. Um, but that's, so there's a couple different ways. You saw the first game was very passive. And they waited until they had a significant advantage to take the hearts. In this game, blue team immediately, they were down five seeds. They were up here. They're like, okay, let's get this. Let's go right to it. The decision was made to immediately go for it. Um, and they were safe enough that, you know, the red team couldn't react. Uh, obviously, if red had been in this area, it would have been a little risky to do it. But with just the positioning on the map, red's only real choice, I believe, was to take the, the bottom terror here. The bottom horror, rather. And um, red did that. Then, red, then blue tried to counter that, but it just was, by the time it got here, it's too late. So you can see the map distance is a little bit elongated. A little bit hard to get there. Uh, now, unfortunately, red team is gonna. I think this is a bit of a mistake. They're gonna be a little too aggressive here, trying to take this camp. Um, but that's the general idea. Now, there's also the case where you would get three three seeds. I mean, three seed camps, three small seed camps, which is cool. <clears throat> we can take a look. I believe. Let me look at something. Not sure, because there's four of these. I'm not sure which one it is. They actually do get all three small camps. And so, if you get all three small, if you get three small camps, then you can just simply take one large terror and you have a terror. You have one large horror. I keep calling these things terrors. I think they're really horrors. Um, zoom out a little bit. We'll fast forward through this. And so, I mean, that covers most of it. The idea is, you know, you want to steal a camp if you can and get three of the small camps and then one of the large ones. But you have to be ready right at a minute and 30. And you, at the least you want to get are two small camps. You also want to defend the horrors. If the team takes, if the other team takes a horror, you can take the other one in response or you can attempt to gank them, you know, jump them while they're taking the horror. You never really want to let the other team get both. And so you can see Knight's up. Blue's in a bit of a bad spot. Tychus is dead. Rhaegar, really low. Uh, Red, though, does sit in lane for a little bit. Looks like Tychus is going to come bottom to get some seeds. Blue team immediately went top. 
Nice play from the Stitches and Zeratul recognizing where red is. They got both camps top. And so even if blue gets these bottom, or no, the I've got the colors wrong. Blue, took, they saw that red was bot and they took the seeds top. And now they're actually able to get this camp as well. And so they're at about 40. We have 42 seeds. So quite a good turnaround there. When you're at 40 plus, then one of these horrors is enough to get you enough seeds for a tear. Uh, they're actually going to get a kill on Marine here. And immediately, I believe they're going to start this. I'm not certain. Yeah, looks like Murden's going to go ahead and start that. And so <clears throat> Rainer's dead. This is a perfect opportunity. They're not being super passive like the first game. Uh, immediately going right to this. They got... Remember, Zeratul took this one, Stitches took this. Red team was bottom, but red team was in lane for a little bit, so they were a little slow to take seeds. Uh, they got this camp, I believe, just fine, but by the time they could react to here, blue team had respawned, come down from the top of the map, and was able to fight and get enough out of this to get 42. And 40 should be your goal. Uh, so if you get 40, then you can get 60 out of one of these terrors, but still, that assumes that you get every single seed from a large horror, which is not always easy. Uh, Zeratul taking a fall here. I'm not sure what they're saying. Uh, but you see Murden's taking this on 101. A little risky, but he's able to get most of the seeds, and now he's got his help coming back in. If if Stitches, you know, if everybody that when they were down here, right before Murden started this, if they'd just gone to this, it would already be down. They'd already have the seeds. Um, and you can see what's going to happen here when they get this. I believe, yeah, Tychus isn't going to be able to steal anything, or he'd die. Uh, and immediately they have a terror. So boom. That's uh, pretty much part one. Different ideas. Uh, ideally you want to steal one, you know, get both of your small camps and steal one of theirs. Get a horror when there is a, the moment presents itself. Uh, you know, a single kill is usually enough for that. Depending on death timers and, and how your team's doing. If you're all really low, you might want to back up and heal up first. Obviously, if the other team starts to take a horror, then you can react and take the other one. Or you can, if you're in a position, you can make the jump on them and kill them and steal the seeds from them. Um, you can also take the passive approach and wait till there's a substantial advantage, but that is very risky because you could end up losing both of them. Um, and so that, that'll do it for part one. In part two, we'll talk about how to use Merc camps with the terrors, like how to style that in, a little, go into a little bit more, and uh, how to use the terror itself. So we'll wrap this up, this is 26 minutes, but that's the idea. Okay, always be ready at a minute 30. And you know, just follow those guidelines. You want to get at least 40 off the small camps so that one of these is enough. Otherwise, you end up having to steal seeds from the top one. But either way, you want to get to 100 and deny your opponent at all times from getting 100 seeds. And know how many seeds are in the camps. If you can do that, you're ahead of the curve, I think. 15 in each of the small ones and 60 in the big ones, okay? All right, guys, so be back with part two in just a minute.